Hello ladies, I hope you're having a pleasant summer. Uh, today we're continuing our theme on international students and as I was preparing for uh, today's episode, I had the topic of bad company corrupts and I went online and I found this Australian article titled Australia's on-campus sex assault problem accurately affects international students. So to summarize, the article was talking about the university in Australia where sexual assault cases are very dominant and what is interesting is that the offenders are targeting female international students. Now the reason why is because, you know, these female international students are new to the country, they don't really know how things work, and talking about the cultural and language barriers, and also the fact that depending on where these female students are from, it could be shameful for them to even report sexual assault cases either to the police, to the school, or to their family. So the, the perpetrators feel like, oh, I can get away, you know, assaulting an international student because she's not going to do anything about it. So I was Thinking about that and linking it to the uh, to today's topic, uh, the, the well, I want to mention the article doesn't mention the and the circumstances or the situations in which the sexual assaults take place. But in my own experience, I know that from being an international student and having you know international students friends, bad company corrupts and bad company can sometimes lead to sexual assault cases. I'm not saying all the time, but it could be there are circumstances, there are times when you associate with the wrong people, you do the wrong things, it can lead to sexual assault, it can lead to a decline in your faith, it can lead to a decline in your studies, you know, you're not focusing on studies anymore. There's an entire spectrum of things that can happen when you are associates when you are associate with the wrong crowd. So I want to talk about that today. I want to talk about the bad company that corrupts, and as female international students, we need to be careful. I mean, just look at these articles that people are now targeting female international students. We just need to be careful, extra, extra careful. We all know the verse in 1 Corinthians 15, 33 that says, Do not be deceived. Good comp uh, bad company, sorry. Bad company uh, corrupts good morals. So it is important. And I want to talk today specifically about two uh, bad companies. One is classmates especially classmates for uh, international students, classmates, uh, or you can also add to that um, roommates, or roommates, housemates, whatnot. And the second category I uh, want to mention church members now we, i mean we know we all know the situation that international students face i mean you're in a new country new people new culture new language perhaps new uh, school everything is new and you're trying to, as an international student you're trying to adjust you're trying to you know get familiar with things and like that australian article said like that article said is people and those sexual offenders, they tend to target and see, okay, this girl doesn't really know her way around, I can probably attack her. Or you have those friends or you have those classmates or the people around that have bad tendencies and because you don't really know how to, you know, deal with things and you can end up with bad company i'm um, talking about my own university for example we it w it's a large it's a large university in canada i mean the amount of promiscuity on campus was just uh it was just godlessness all around everywhere on campus immorality and every year without exaggerating ladies we had we always had three to four sexual assault cases every year I don't know how it happened. There were always sexual assault cases on that campus. Not only that, it was the campus had a lot of pubs. Oh my goodness, a lot of pubs. I was leaving um, campus for a while and I could just see the amount of, you know, godlessness among the, the roommates, the neighbors. It was just, everybody is just living their own lives. And as an international student, you come to a environment like that because you want to fit in because you want to blend in it's easy it's a very very easy to pick up and say oh because i want to be 
with these kind of people i want to fit in i want to blend in i want to go with the flow let me just follow what they're doing or do you know follow what they're doing and not only that sometimes you can also have a crowd of people that are not doing bad things for example they are maybe school driven i mean it's not bad that you are school driven you're that you prioritize your academics however the danger is when you prioritize your academics and you put god second then you know that you know this is not good it's not heading the right direction so there are many things that can happen on campus you could be money driven so many things and as an international student it is important to be careful who are you associating yourself with because there are so many dangers around one of the things that will definitely help you is to be spirit filled very i mean the spirit will help you will direct your steps he will guide you and he will give you that wisdom you need to make the right decisions now first corinthians 6 i want to start out with first corinthians 6 12 it says that all things are lawful for me but not all things are helpful all things are lawful for me but i will not be dominated by anything and what this passage is saying is that everything is permissible being a born again a child of god I have that freedom. I was free from the powers of darkness. I have the freedom to do anything I want to do. But are, is everything beneficial for me? Is, any, is everything necessary for me to do? I can go to parties. I have that freedom to go to parties. But do I have to go to every party? Do I have to drink like people are drinking? Do I have to have a boyfriend like everybody is having a boyfriend? I mean we need to do the things that are beneficial that will help us that will bless us not just follow the crowd oh because my friends are doing it or because this new friends that i got are doing this i'm gonna do it everything everything is permissible to do but not everything is beneficial for us for our spiritual lives so it's important to i i'll definitely advise you to keep this verse in mind because it will help you discern what to do and what not to do talking about the power of the holy spirit it's galatians 5 16 17 which says but i say walk by the spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh for the desires of the flesh are against the spirit and the desires of the spirit are against the flesh for these are opposed to each other to keep you from doing the things you want to do you need to make it a daily prayer father please fill me with the holy spirit fill me with the holy spirit because the holy spirit will help you not gratify the desires of the flesh like i mentioned before you could have friends who are academic driven and it's perfectly fine. I mean, you're an international student for what? Because you want to study and you want to, you know, advance and have a good portfolio or whatnot. So you uh, you can have associate your, yourself with friends who are really into school and academics, and that's great. However, if school becomes your God, if school comes before God, then you know there is a problem. I mean, the flesh can say, oh, we need to study, 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 study. But then at the same time, you are minimizing your time with the Lord. Why? Because the people that you are rolling with, they don't care too much about putting God first. And it is so important to be careful. It is so important to do the things that God wants you to do. Now, the second company of people to be careful of is church members. Now, we would not think of church as a place where we would find people of bad company, but it is true. In every church, there are always, you know, those people that are not following the word of God. There's always a Jew that's a scary somewhere. Not only one, but many. And you can um, be in, either you can be in churches where, you know, the pastor is very godly and leads the congregation to Christ, but the members are not. No, all, not all the members are, you know, following the word of God. Or you can be in a church where from head to toe it's just polluted and then everybody's just living, you know, a lifestyle that is not pleasing to the Lord. So you have to be careful, ladies. And some, um, most of the time when people know that you're new to the country and you're an international student, you know, they want to take you in and show you how things go and, you know, show you places and tell you how the lifestyle is, which is not bad 
in of itself but we need to be careful not to adopt those ways that are not according to the word of god and that leads me to the second thing the first thing i mentioned was you know that will help you really be have discernment is to be spirit filled and the second thing is to know the word of god ladies if you do not know the word of god if you're not familiar with the word of god you deserve to be deceived you deserve to be led astray because sometimes some of the mistakes that we make it's our own fault because we don't have the time to focus in the word of god and people use that weakness and they use our ignorance to lead us astray i want to mention a verse in second timothy chapter three and it's verse five to six it talks about godliness godlessness in the last days so it says that there will be people having the appearance of godliness but denying its power avoid such people for among them are those who creep into households and capture weak women burdened with sins and led astray by various passions uh, i'll at verse 7 always learning and never able to arrive at a knowledge of the truth this passage is so important let's see it slowly like um a phrase by phrase so we see that there will be in the last days people who have the appearance of godliness but denying its power you can end up with sisters that you know your small your small group of sisters who appear to be godly they shout no they praise the lord but they're not living a life that is according to the word of god they're not doing the things of god you know and you have to be careful and the bible says avoid such people don't mix around with people i mean you can still you know uh, talk and uh, you can talk and discuss, but don't follow their footsteps. Don't go around and mixing up with them because these people will lead you astray. I want to mention the brothers. The brothers, be careful, ladies. There's no... Um, a woman of God should not be hanging around with the brothers, going along with the brothers, oh, just for the sake of fellowship. I mentioned that in a previous episode called... Uh, stay away from them men please if you haven't watched it please 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 watch it because it tells you about the relationship with men and women that we need to be careful even if it's for the sake of studying the bible there's no uh, reason for we men of god to be with the brothers alone verse 6 it says for among them are those who creep into households and capture weak women burdened with sins and led astray by various passions always learning and never able to arrive at a knowledge of the truth these are women who are always you go to church you're always learning about new things but you don't arrive to the knowledge of truth you don't have the time to really absorb and digest the word of god and that's why i say it's important ladies to know the word of god so that you will not be led astray by these men or by these sisters or by anybody you know because they say oh she's a new uh she's a new per she's new into this country or she's an international student she doesn't know really much we can just you know play around with her no ladies you need to know the word of god so in everything you do make sure that it is a core in accordance with the word of god you need to put god first in everything you need to be um led by the spirit in everything not be enticed by people not say oh because i wanted to fellowship with those ladies that's why i ended up doing it or that's how you know i was led astray but you need to be on your guard you need to be careful you need to be sober and vigilant so there are also churches where you can end up where from head to toe like i said everything is just pollution the pastor is preaching heresy the members are just living a lifestyle that is not godly and the only way you can discern that hey this is a bad company this is not the place i'm supposed to be is to know the word of god i'm going to be saying that this ladies over and over because i really really want you to understand that it is important to be familiar with the word of god to know the word of god so that you will not be deceived because there's those pastors i mean i'm not saying i'm not talking about the pastor that said oh my name is jesus or i'm a i i saw jesus i saw this and he's describing jesus because no sometimes you just can point out and say okay this guy is fake but i'm talking about the pastors who's who are preaching heresy in a sort 
or in a way that it sounds so good and it sounds so biblical when in reality it is not and the more you listen to those kind of preaching the more you sit down and listen to those kind of pastors your spiritual life goes down without you even knowing it so some of the things that this pastor will say and some of the things that i've heard people say is god doesn't want you to suffer now that sounds so good yes god doesn't want us to suffer of course why would god why would a loving god want his children to suffer but it is heresy it's false it has no biblical i don't see that in the bible where god says i don't want you to suffer he's own child suffered why wouldn't we suffer um, Acts chapter 14 22 um, it says about the Apostle Paul he was strengthening the souls of the disciples encouraging them to continue in the faith and saying that through many tribulations we must enter the kingdom of God last time I checked tribulations are not fun tribulations entail sufferings for Christ and there are additional verses that say that as children of God, we will go through suffering because the suffering is good for our faith. And anybody that says, oh, God doesn't want you to suffer. I mean, even though it sounds good, you know that this is not. If you know your word, the word of God, you know that, hey, this pastor is not teaching. Te the preaching or teaching the right thing. Another thing that I, uh, I, I hear a lot is for people to say, Oh, we're not perfect like Jesus, so we will sin. Oh, we're not perfect like Jesus, so we are sinners. We're supposed to sin. Let's go to Romans chapter 6, verse 14. For sin will, no, will have no dominion over you, since you are not under law but under grace. What does that mean? There's a difference between saying, Oh, I'm not perfect. I'm a sinner, so I will sin. And there's another difference in saying, though I am a sinner, I will do everything by the power of the Holy Spirit to avoid sin. There are conscious, conscious sins where you know that, hey, the Bible says I need to control my tongue, but you say the words regardless. That's why it's saying here, for sin will no longer have dominion over you. For those conscious sins where I know that when I say these words, I will sin, those are the sins that should not have dominion over us because we're not under law but under grace. We have the power to overcome those sins. Now, there are other sins that are called unconscious sin. Those are the sins that I'm not aware of. For example, I can say something to someone and in my mind and in my, um, in my mind, I think it's, normal but i didn't know that when doing it i offended someone those are incursion sins so you ask forgiveness for those sins because you didn't know and uh, you know you didn't know uh, when you pray, you know, you ask God to forgive you for those unconscious sins that you committed without knowing it was sinful. But here it's saying that for sin will have no dominion over you. Those conscious sins, those sins where I know that promiscuity is a sin, where I know that um, gossiping is a sin, lying is a sin, those are the sins that should not have dominion over us. First John chapter 2 verse 1 says, My little children, I'm writing these things to you so that you may not sin but if anyone does sin we have an advocate with the father jesus christ with the father jesus christ the righteous my little children i'm writing these things to you so that you may not sin so many so we see that in the bible in the new testament it is expected for people who are spirit fearful, people who walk not according to the flesh but according to the spirit, to avoid sin, to choose not to sin. And again, I'm talking about those conscious sins that you know that, hey, this is a sin. To choose not to do it. Choose not to commit adultery. Choose not to fornicate. Choose not to cheat. Choose not to slander. Choose not to fill in the blank god wants us the father wants us to live lives when we are dominating sin and not just say oh i'm a sinner what can i do i'll just sin that's not 
biblical even though it sounds biblical but it is not but here again i'm just giving you some examples of those heresies that you can find in the church if you don't know the word of god you think it's perfectly all right where it is not and by listening to those kind of preaching you get deeper and deeper into seeing and into a shallow shallow christian life so i mentioned quite a few examples uh today about you know different people that can lead you astray like i said it could be in the church where you think it's such a safe place but you know it's never a safe place these days or it could be in school you know your classmates or the people you live with on campus or at home and whatnot um the whole point or the big point is ladies you need to be careful as an international student you need to know who you are your identity is first and foremost before even being a student you are the daughter of the most high so it is important to walk not by your flesh but by the spirit to be spirit filled like i said pray ask for the father to give you to fill you with the holy spirit and second know the bible read the bible study the bible meditate on the bible apply the word of god so that you will not be deceived there's so many like i said there's so many dangers around you know being in a foreign land so many things you're exposed to um that if we're careless, if we're not watchful about what we're doing and how we're um, tying ourselves to, that it's easy that you can end up making a lot of mistakes, making huge mistakes. I mean, we will make mistakes as international students, but I'm talking about those great mistakes that affect your spiritual life, that aspect, that affects uh, the mistakes that affect your morals. That's why it's no bad company corrupts good morals sometimes you can be with people who have good intentions but because they they're not choosing good paths at a certain point at a particular point not know that you have to be scared oh because you're in a new land and there's so many things that can happen but no you have to know who you are in christ be confident in the lord trust in the lord walk by the spirit know your word the word of god know the bible and just do things in wisdom and let the Lord really direct your steps. Take care, ladies, and stay blessed as always.